guys. This is Roy 69501. What? Uh, the comic book that I'm gonna display was published back in 1993. And it is Superman issue number 80. Look at that cover. Nice, huh? So I'm gonna put it here. Okay. So uh, this video is that I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna review one. Well, not, I'm not, not review. Okay. Uh, I don't see myself like a comic book reviewer. I'm gonna give you my thoughts about the comic books that I read. That's, that's it. And. And some that I'm gonna show you that I'm, that I haven't read yet, but it would uh, I would read eventually, and I will make a video one. So the one that I already read off the bat was that pulls over the the cuttings between Teen Titans and Superboy and Legion Lost. Okay, here's part one, which is the annual, number one. And I have to say, the art was good. Check out that art. The art was excellent. The art was good. And then there's some space here. Uh, let's see, I can give you here some other pages here. Look at that. And you know what I like about this? This is a specific issue. Check this out. And here's part two, Superboy issue number nine. Part three, Legion Lost number nine. And Teen Titans, the conclusion, part four, number nine. And, well, the story, although I don't be Superboy, and I don't read Teen Titans. Yeah, maybe I have one, maybe a few Teen Titans from the New 52. But I bought the this crossover kind of like an excuse to buy Teen Titans, Superboy, and Legion Lost. Although I got I got a little bit more of, of Legion Lost, although I say that one of my videos that I'm gonna, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, I don't remember if I mentioned about Legion Lost, but that's besides the point. The story, mm, it wasn't that great. It was not. It was not great, great, great. But, hey, I have to be honest. It wasn't that bad either. I mean, I cannot say, I would not say, well, the story was so lousy that I never went past through part one. Because it was not. And the bad guy, of this story, which happened to be this guy here on the cover, that bad guy, I mean, looks so awesome, so awesome. I mean, he's such a badass. I mean, the way that he, I mean, the way that they create this character, I mean, just awesome. I think there, I think there's a picture, one of these comic books, that that they did a cross up. I mean, they did a puzzle. They, they, they draw, they draw a puzzle 
of him and it looks so awesome I mean I was like and the art on the Teen Titans animal look at the art I can't get over it so nice so 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 nice well it's done by Tom DeFalco so I mean it's so so great Because it is a grill of, of bad guy. Look at, look at this page over here. Okay. The thing is that the, these bad guys, I forgot the name because they have such a weird names. Is that they... They, they want to take the Legion and the Titans to kill each other, make them fight to the death, and the one that survived will be part of the colony, and the colony is populated by metahumans. Metahumans are human beings with power that they are not superheroes. I mean, at least on the New 52, I mean, because all every every single superhero except Batman, Robin, Nightwing, the non-superpower heroes on the DC universe, they are not metahumans. They are humans. They need toys for them to fight crime. But all the rest of the superheroes on the DC universe, they are metahumans. Now, the, they call them superheroes, that's okay, but they use, but, I mean, whether they call it superheroes or not, they are metahumans. Metahumans are humans with power, or superpower. So, in the DC Universe, they use the word uh, metahumans kind of like to, uh, kind of like to take apart to separate, yes, to separate, to separate the superheroes from not superheroes, which happen to be the metahumans. I don't know if I'm maybe I don't know if I'm explaining myself correctly. If not, let me know. I don't know if I'm making sense. <laughs> yes, sometimes it's kind of hard to to put uh, to put in words what I'm thinking. Sometimes I get to put any words, it just it doesn't come out the way I'm thinking. So I hope that you have the patience and you know to try to understand what I'm saying. And my apology to some of you if you don't get to understand half what I'm saying. <laughs> But that's the whole story. Basically, is that this guy here that looks like Skeletor from He Man with wings, he's trying to create a colony of metahumans to conquer the earth. That's what it is. So, the art on this one here in Teen Titans. Although I don't read Teen Titans, I have to say, okay, here's, okay, here is. You see this guy over here? That's the close up of the one on the cover. And the artist of this issue is E. Gaga. It is I or E. Is I G, so I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but I believe is I uh, <coughs> I Gara Gara does G U R G U A R A. Um, I guess I hope that I pronouncing his name and the last name correctly. But, so the art on this one here, 
it's good. I mean, it's very good. And the thing is, I'm not going to give you my thoughts about a specific comic book. Because, look at, look at this page. Oh. The thing is that <coughs> when it comes to uh, crossovers or, mean or mini series, there's always going to be an issue that is excellent. One of them, one of them is going to be boring and regular. So, so I'm not going to give you my thoughts on every single issue. So I'm going to tell you overall about the coding crossover. And like I said on the beginning of this video, it's not that great. But it's not that bad either. To be honest with you, I was the story did to me what it's supposed to do. Entertaining. <coughs> and I had fun re uh, and I had fun reading it. So overall, it was good. And then what I'm gonna do also from now on that if I have to if I have to rate the story for one to five, I would say <coughs> three out of five. Three point yeah, three out of five. That's a new thing. <laughs> So instead to me saying, well, it's good, it's regular, or it's bad, so I would say, well, it's good. Kind of like 3.5, or I mean 3 out of 5. So, overall, it was good. I don't know if you can get it. Single issue, oh yeah. I mean, because you can get all single issues, or you can get it on on trade. But overall, it wasn't that bad at all. So I give him, you know, it's like a 3 point out of 5. It wasn't that bad at all. Nope. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. So, I got this one here, which I haven't started reading yet. Aha! Look at that. Yep. Batman Dead by Design. Look at that. I haven't started reading yet. This baby, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna pick up. Oh, this is nice. I love, I love this. I will show you some pages on the inside. Look at that. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna pick a, uh, I'm gonna take a specific day. Well, let's say afternoon, and then I will take this baby. <coughs> I will go to a Starbucks. I'm gonna order a full black coffee, and I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of it reading this book at Starbucks. Oh yeah, relax. I don't know about the Starbucks in the states, but but here they have music. Although. Oh, so. So I'm gonna have fun reading this. Oh yeah. <coughs> also, finally I got all the issues from Night of Owl. I haven't read it yet. So the thing is I have to, since, I mean, since I lost track, I don't know if there's a specific order reading this puzzle. If there is one, if, if there is one, please let me, uh, let me know. Although I'm gonna do a research on the on the internet and see if I can if there is one specific order. I mean, I know that the that the story might start on Batman, but on the crossover, excuse me, I don't know if it has a specific order. 
So once I finish reading this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my thought about the whole story, not a specific issue. Because one, because I mean the different. I mean when you take, let's say like a at least for me I like to do is when there's a big crossover like this one or like or like the Collins. Uh, I like to have all the comic books that is part of that crossover or mini series. In this case, this one. And just sit down and read it one after, after the other. For me, that way, kind of like, for me, it's a lot easier to get into the story because when you get one or two issue a week or three comic books a week so by the time you get to next week at least happen to me sometimes I get to forget what I read last week so so I have to have all the comic books and read it one after, after the other in a way <coughs> I get to it's like reading a, a tray, just divided in comic books. So, I mean, I don't know if that, if some of you will, I mean, do that. But in my case, I like to to have all the comic books, whether it's a mini series or crossover, and read them all one after the other. Now, if it is a maxi series, like more than eight. Then I would read. Uh, then I would read the first four, and then when the the other four come the same, then I would read them all. And depend. It's all depend. And also that I haven't read it yet. Huntress and Power Girl issue number one. I haven't read it yet. Uh, there are two. I read it. Love the art. The art is great. So the story about this is that Earth, planet Earth, specifically Metropolis, is getting well, not specifically Metropolis. I say the whole planet Earth is being invaded by is any demon alien that is sent by which uh, for me is the same aliens that appear on Jesus' that come from planet apocalypse and basically is the human being fighting against those against an invasion and our superheroes trying to stop them but when they thought they can stop it, they all die. That was fun. Yeah. Superman dies, Batman dies, and Wonder Woman dies. I mean, I can understand that Batman will die easily because he's human. I mean, I don't care how much strong he is, he's still human, so I would be surprised. But Superman and Wonder Woman, well, they all, they all die. And like I said, that was fun. But that's it. Basically, the Earth is invaded, is being invaded by these alien creatures, and then, uh, then our superheroes die, and on the end we see the flipper of Flash. Yep. And that's what it is. It looks good. I will give him a four out of five. And I also got this one here, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number ten. I bought this one because there's this character on the cover, which I forgot the name of it. So I'm gonna read this one. If it's good, I haven't read it yet. If it gets my attention, then I will buy some of the back issues or a trade. 
and see what happens. I got dial H, number one. I haven't read it yet. So, it is good though. It is good. I haven't read it yet. Well, I got this one free. I got plasma uh, ink, number one, in the eye of the, in the wire line. Issue number one. I haven't read it yet. I got mine the gap. This is a very, very thick, I mean, this is a very thick comic book. It looks like a double size as this one. So, I haven't read it yet. So, we'll see. I, read, I got the Ravagers issue number one, which I don't know why I ordered it. So, now that I have it, so we'll see. If it's good, then I will buy issue number two, and then we'll go to the comic book shop and buy issue number two, and then number three, and number four, at least the first part. And see. I got the spider from Dynamite, issue number one. Haven't read it yet. I also got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Color Classic, issue number one. I read. I never read the, the Teenage Mutant back in the 80s. So, we'll see. If I like it, I will buy it. If not, well, well. And I bought this one because it was on sale. The Amazing Spider-Man Parallel Life. I believe this is kind of like a reprint of of the best short story of Amazing Spider-Man. So I check it out on on the inside, and that's and that's what this looks like. So I haven't read it yet. So we'll see. Oh, well, anyway. And then I still have few more that have a short on the, on the video, but eventually when I'm ready to to give you my thoughts about it, uh, because I already read Oh yeah, I forgot to show you this there. Oh, I forgot to show you. I got issue number 13 of Your Devil. Hell for Night. Cool cup. Haven't read uh, No, I haven't read it yet. And... So the the only the only thoughts that I give you are Earth two and the calling crossover. So this one is three out of five, and this one is a four out of five. So you know, so I'm gonna so far. And it costs four dollars. Yeah. Wow. So we'll see. We'll see how this one goes. Now, when it comes to Teen Titans, I don't think I'm gonna continue reading. Um. Uh. The continue reading the the issues. Maybe what I do is that maybe I buy the the first trade of Team Titans and see 
Because I'm going to be doing that a lot. I mean, I'm going to be buying... I mean, there are... I don't know about you guys, but for me... Like, for example... Uh, for example, Super Bowl. Or Teen Titans. Uh, I want to read stories about Superboy and I don't want it to read at the same time. It's kind of like, I don't feel like, uh, I don't want to invest money every single month for this comic book when I'm not that too crazy about it. Not like Batman, you know, or the Green Lantern. So what I'm going to do with Superboy, for example, also mean I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy him in trade. Maybe I will do that with the Teen Titans. Because if I had to choose between Superboy and the Teen Titans, I guess I would choose Teen Titans. So. And also, after this story is over, the Collins is when the Ravagers uh, after this crossover of the of the Collins is when this one starts because this issue starts where this was end because they escape from the Collins so the Ravagers start the story when they escape, they get the con. So that part looks interesting. So I haven't read this one yet. I know that, that this is a continuation on this one because in the end it will tell you. Ah, uh, you have to. Do you, you want to know the following adventures of the Ravagers? You have to pick up Ravagers number one. So I got it. Here. And right now. Uh, I'm about to finish reading this, uh, it's a very old crossover, it's called Grinity, I don't know if some of you have known about this, there's Grinity issue number one, kind of shiny cover, and number two, oops, come on, stay there, don't move. So this is a crossover between the Green Lanterns, the Dark Star, and Legion. So actually this is number one. Part one is a seven or eight part. And this one, two, three, four, five. yeah. It's a eight part story. So here's the second part, Green Lantern, number 44, part 5 is Legion 93, issue number 57, part 4 is Dark Star number 11, Green Lantern number 45, Legion number 58, And issue number seven, part seven actually, is Dark Star number twelve. And the end of the story, Trinity issue number two. I'm about issue number five now, so I only got three more issues and I will finish it. And maybe I will go and maybe I will do a video about this crossover because it's not bad. <coughs> it's really good. It's really good. Although I was not I was not reading Legion back in the nineties or either the Dutch Star. But all overall, so far it's good. This is from 1993. I haven't read it ever since. Saying, uh, this is the second time that I'm reading this, so 
place here, so it's kind of new for me. Well, guys, I hope that you liked the video. Till next time. Bye.